Hey, what's going on YouTube? Mike Lord Games here today, coming at you with my one last final deck profile for the time being. Because, as you guys know, I have declared that I am done, you know, making Yu-Gi-Oh videos and I'm moving on to gaming. But I figured I'd share with you guys my one last fun deck that I made before I actually call it done. At, at least for now, I'm not done permanently, you're done forever, but, you know, just, just done temporarily. So, this deck is a very fun rank 3 deck, it's pretty consistent, and just get into the deck profile, it's really fun. 3 Gilosaurus, uh, it's for special summon power. Note that he does allow your opponent to special summon mo a monster out of the graveyard as well if you use this, but if you use this on the first turn, they don't exactly have a target to be able to summon, so it's kind of just like free special summons all day long. We are running three Marauding Captain, because Marauding Captain can special summon any level 4 or lower monster, which allows you to rank 3 with the stack. Triple Crane Crane, because getting monsters out of your graveyard is just as important as getting them in there. And what I mean by that is we're actually running one Mathematician. Probably could do with upping Mathematician to two. But, you know, for right now I like it at one. It's pretty fun at one. You don't really see this too often when you don't want to have it. You don't see it not enough when you, you know, don't want to have it. So, it's pretty nice to actually have it at one. Because if you get it, you know, you can get something into the graveyard and get a playoff. And then if this dies, you know, whatever, you get a free draw. So our dumping targets, we have Pero Pero Cerberus, it is an out to the Dijin lock, as well as a lot of other problematic cards, out to vanities, out to a lot of things. You have the Dijin, used to lock down your opponent from being able to special summon. So those are our dumping targets. Now, for the rest of our monsters, we are playing a Deep Sea Diva with Mermaid Archer to go with it. Now, the Deep Sea Diva in the Mermaid Archer may seem a little strange, but if you can get Deep Sea Diva out and pull this out, you can make, you know, our bodies, which is always a very good synchro to be able to make. But Mermaid Archer actually does have some effectiveness in this deck, even if she's not just used for Deep Sea Diva. She can equip a level 3 or lower monster to herself, and she gains 800 attack, putting her at 2k. And if she would be destroyed, you can destroy that monster instead. So she can, she can kind of, you know, make herself stronger and give herself a little bit of protection, which is always pretty cool. Um, currently one copy of Gors, although I want to up it to two because Gors is amazing and is a very good, strong monster that people just don't expect to see. So I want to up Gors to two, possibly even three. Currently Power Giant because I don't have another Gores, but Power Giant actually is pretty interesting. If you use Power, like if you have Dijin or Paro in your hand, you can just go Power Giant, ditch one of these two into the graveyard to special summon Power Giant as a 2200 level 3 beat stick monster. It becomes level 3, and then you could use that to, you know. XCs with the other level 3s. We are playing Destiny Hero Doom Lord. This guy is an out to many problematic cards that you simply just can't get over. You know, if you can't get over a monster in a turn, but you really need an out to something, this guy is a searchable out to the Dijin Lock. It is a searchable out to a lot of problems. And then, we are running two Necros of Colossus because we want to dish in lock as much as possible and this deck can actually abuse the dish in lock quite well for spells we have two necros cycle to be able to get that dish in lock off very important that we do you could actually up this to three and just continuously play over colossus's effect that's always something you can do triple rota because being able to search out your Mist Valley, your Marauding Captain... Wait, why did I just say Mist Valley? <laughs> Colossus, your D-Hero, uh, Doom Lord, or your Marauding Captains. So you can search into, you know, you can search into your Searcher into Jinlock, or you can search into a Summoner, or search into a Dijin out. 
So pretty, pretty cool versatility that this card actually allows us to have. Triple upstart. Just free plusing, free draw power. Why not? This card is actually very useful in the deck. Part of dichotomy. Because of the fact that in this deck, a lot of the monsters had different types. You have Warrior, you have a Rock, Fiend, Sea Serpent, Beast, Fiend, Spellcaster, Winged Beast, Warrior, Dinosaur. You have a lot of various different types, and this allows you to put them back, get draw power, and this can allow you to, once again, recycle your Colossuses, or recycle your any Colossuses in the graveyard, redraw cards, and just kind of, once again, re-abuse that Dijon lock. Of course, we have Preparation of Rights to also search out Colossus and recycle your ritual spells. So this would allow you, well this alleviates the fact of you being able to actually use three of the Necros cycle because this can recycle it and basically give you three uses. Just pretty cool. And the fact that this can also search a monster from the we'll search out one of the monsters from the deck is also very beneficial. Foolish burial for dumping one of your two targets. This is why we don't need another mathematician is because Foolish Burial does exist. We are playing two Inferno Reckless Summons. Inferno Reckless Summon just allows you to go ape shit with this deck. It would force, like, you can just special summon one of these guys, Inferno Reckless off them, summon, you know, get Marauding Captain into that, Inferno Reckless Summon, summon three Gilosauruses, summon them off of Crane Crane. This gives you a lot of playability with this card. This just allows the deck to have so much speed and so much sacking power. And honestly, it can set up a load of plays for product economy. It can set up a load of plays in general and give you a lot of speed. Two main deck MST because back row hurts this. May up MST to three, not sure. Raigeki. Raigeki, obviously, for Dijin outs. Dark Hole for Dijin outs. Book of Moon for Dijin outs, and then for our one trap, Vanity's Emptiness. So, this deck is a rank 3 varying control deck. You don't really set a lot of cards in this, and that's why Gores is very good. Gores at 3 in this deck would be fantastic to have. Um, but as of right now, there really wouldn't be a lot of room to fit in a third, well, to fit in a third Gores. Although, I would definitely love to do that. So, for our extra deck, we have one Armadis, because you're only ever going to synchro once in this deck. Although you, well, yeah, you technically would only synchro once in this deck, and obviously the best card to synchro with would be Armadis. Mechquipped Engineer, this card is absolutely really good. Leviathan Dragon is pretty much staple, it's outstanding monster. Um, Soul of Silver Mountain, a very good card to have in the deck due to the fact that you have Marauding Captain, Gilosaurus, and Crane Crane that are all Earth. You have Pero Pero Cerberus that's an Earth. So you can take advantage of being able to play Soul of Silver Mountain. I do have Levier the Sea Dragon. This is what allows you to just constantly over abuse the Dijin. Just banish the Dijin to summon the Colossus, bring it back, overlay. Detach, do it again. Make another Dijin lock. We have, of course, Acid Golem. Giga Brilliant to make your monster stronger. Tem Tempo. I am trying out hum Humming. Fortune Tune. Battle Cruiser Deontis. Currently, Mellow Melody. Miz well, uh, Mizzy Rhythm and two Zen mains. All your card is a very good choice in this deck because all your card allows you to well all your card allows you to pop back row which is good in this deck just I don't have one. Also you could try a Dante the Burning Abyss to try to get some mill power though I would not necessarily recommend it due to the fact that the deck is already fast enough with all of its spells and it, you don't really want to be wasting spells if you don't have to. And you wouldn't have any targets to be able to recycle with Dante, so it would be a pretty bad idea. 
So guys, let me know what you think of this deck profile. Um, it is a really fun deck. It is really consistent and it's a lot of fun to play. Um, it's versatile. It's fast. I can't really, I can't really say anything negative about this deck. Um, I did recently play the variant with uh, a lot of back row instead of speed, and the the back row variant did pretty well. But this version just does a lot better and performs a lot smoother and performs better when you need it to. And then you don't have to worry about things like Denka Seca because, you know, that being card in the meta or being just used in a lot of decks in general is always a problematic card to deal with. And when you're running a lot of back row, Denka Seca isn't a really good, you know, isn't really good to run into. So I completely changed the deck to where it's all spells, all speed, and it's, it's fantastic. It really is. So like I said, let me know what you guys think about this deck in the comments down below and this will be uh, my last Yu-Gi-Oh video for some time so hope you guys enjoyed this deck I may do some more depending on the stipulations it probably will just be like IRL decks and stuff like that or just like fun ideas that I can come up with I'm not quitting Yu-Gi-Oh I'm just not making videos for all because right now I feel like I don't have much content to actually post up for you guys you know, it should never feel like that that's the case, or ever be the case, but it's just kind of, just kind of how it's been. So, yeah, I will see you guys later.